When I was 16, I decided that I wanted to go to law school because I wanted to learn how to protect myself, how to think like an attorney, how to negotiate like an attorney, and how to really represent myself in my own music career. I have learned a lot of the best negotiation tactics along the way and some of which I'm going to share with you guys today. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to negotiate your best deal in three steps. Hi guys, I'm Miss Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney, public speaker, and author of How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records, and most importantly, I'm an independent musician. Be sure to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss our weekly videos helping you with your music business, your music career, and giving you updates on what's happening in the music industry today. Now, what inspired this entire video was that we finished my online course, How to Start a Record Label, and if you'd like to get on my email list for that course, please hit that link down in the description. But one of the sections in that course is dedicated to teaching my record label owners how to negotiate your actual record label contract with the artists. And so from that I go, you know what, I think this is going to be helpful for everyone, whether you are a record label owner, but artists, producers, everyone in between, just understanding how do you negotiate deals? Because everything you do in the music industry is going to be based on contracts and negotiating your position in that contract. We're going to have updates about the course coming at you, so make sure you're on the email list, but let's jump right into number three and how to negotiate your best deal. Have the other side make the offer first. Whenever possible, you want to get the person or the company that you're negotiating with to make the offer first because you already know what you want out of the deal, right? So typically we're talking about, let's say, compensation, right? So you're going to get paid a certain amount to do a certain job or to sell something or to license something. And you have the number in your mind of what you want to happen. So by having the other side make the offer first, it gives you the opportunity to potentially get more than what you even were willing to accept to kind of get the deal done. And let me give you an example. We were negotiating a deal and we had the other side make an offer first and this was for licensing a certain song. And the other side ended up coming $20,000 higher than what we were kind of willing and, and you know able to accept and what the client kind of wanted. So in that instance, it was already a win-win situation because we were not gonna haggle over what they had offered or ask for anything more than that. And the client was super happy because you know he ended up getting more money for the song. Now, now, alternatively, it doesn't mean that, you know, just because you want the other side to make an offer that they're gonna do it, right? So if you do have to make the first offer, what you wanna do is start higher than where you ultimately wanna land, right? So let's say if you are, you know, let's say a record label and you have a catalog that you're looking at potentially selling off, well, you know what the number is already. You don't wanna start with that number because you're going into a negotiation. The whole idea is that we're going to haggle to try to get more and to give less, right? And so if you already know that you're going to get kind of pushed down ultimately in what you want, the, the, the final number for the compensation, if that's applicable, well, you start higher because that gives you negotiation room. So at the end of the day, even if you end up kind of landing around what you wanted, as long as you're near the number, you're ultimately going to be happy with how you did in that negotiation. Now, as a common sense kind of thing, if you are going to start a little bit higher, be near the number that you want, guys. Don't go so far above and beyond that you end up killing the deal by accident because you're like, I want a million dollars. They said, you're crazy. We're done. <laughs> well, you don't want that to happen. So stay within the ballpark range of kind of what you're looking for. And then look, if the other side comes back and their number is outrageous, their number is so far fetched that there's just no way it's going to happen. Same thing. It's a deal killer. So I think that by everyone kind of coming together and trying to be reasonable, you're going to be tactful and you're going to hopefully be able to get more out of the deal than you know if you kind of started too low for example but don't be unreasonable because that is definitely a deal killer in my experience number two in how to negotiate your best deal determine what leverage you have the way you determine what leverage you have is you got to think about what value are you bringing right so what kind of makes you interesting to the other side and conversely what is it that the other side wants out of this deal? And when I get a contract from a client and the client says, hey, you know, they made me an offer, please look at the contract, let me know what you think, is it in compliance with industry standard, yada yada. Before I even look at anything in the contract, I'll ask the client those exact questions and I'll say, tell me a little bit about the relationship. 
right? Is this like a friend of yours? Is this someone who's a fan of yours? What kind of leverage do you have in the relationship, right? Or if it's a label, what kind of fan following do you have? What kind of music catalog do you have? I need to know kind of your position in this deal, but then more importantly, what do they want? So sometimes, you know, when we do deals, we are looking at protecting the client. And so we'll go to war over, you know, one word in a sentence because it could just wreak havoc if we go to litigation and this and that. But sometimes we just come in because we're just trying to get the deal done. So we're not gonna get hung up on some of the little minor things. And so kind of having those conversations ahead of time, if you are represented by an attorney is good. But if you're doing these deals yourself, you can go through the same process, determine the leverage, look at what you are bringing to the deal and look at more importantly, what do they want out of you? And look, maybe you don't have a lot of negotiation power right now because you're new to the music industry. You just started your record label, for example. Well, having, let's say, an entertainment attorney, this is where that person becomes really helpful because they can point to what is industry standard. So all of a sudden now you can say, well, I might not have the experience, I might be newer, but this is what's industry standard, so this is what I'm asking for. And all of a sudden you seem a whole lot more reasonable and you're likely to get what you want in that deal because now you can actually point to something and say, sorry, this is the amount that we're taking because it's industry standard. Number one in how to negotiate your best deal Separate perception from reality. I can't tell you how many times clients will come to me and they bring me a contract because they get a super cool offer from a company or a person and they're so excited to do the deal. And then I actually read the contract. And within the four corners of the contract, it says something very different than what was told to, let's say, the artist. And so the perception might be warm and fuzzy and, you know, this person's going to make a huge difference in my career and excitement. We don't enter negotiations with someone we hate. We're not going to want to do deals with people we think are going to screw us over. It's usually with people that we think have the best of intentions. And so knowing that that's the common psychological kind of where we're at when we start these negotiations, of course, you're going to think everything's going to pan out well. Of course, you think that you're getting the deal that they're saying you're going to get. But the four corners of the contract and the actual words in the document might be different. And, you know, as an entertainment attorney, I have the ability to kind of detach from that emotion, right? So I'm not involved in any of that. All I'm doing is looking at what's actually being offered on paper and what happens, let's say, if, this, if the relationship goes sideways. How does my client get out of the deal? How long are gonna, they going to be tied into this thing? And so those are the things that I'm looking for, right? I'm not just looking at, you know, how do we get into it? What's going to be the benefit to the client? It's how is this going to affect my client if things go really badly, right? And so having kind of that that mindset of not getting too wrapped up in the perception of what you think is gonna happen and being more pragmatic with what the actual contract says and the likelihood of what's gonna happen based on the promises that are being made in the contract is gonna make you kind of this master negotiator because all of a sudden now you can kind of detach a little bit from the emotion. And guys, look, especially when we're getting offers, you know, to help us with our music careers or with our record labels, we sometimes have a fear of loss that if we push back or if we try to negotiate a better position for ourselves, that we're going to lose something. And it's from that fear of loss that sometimes we agree to stuff that we wouldn't have otherwise and stuff that's going to get us into trouble down the line. And as you develop this ability to separate perception from reality, one of the best things that you will ever do, and this will happen at some point in your career, is to be willing to walk away and to say no. And even from personal experience, I've walked away from deals that were very exciting and had a lot of opportunity tied to them, but because I did kind of, you know, I went through the steps that we discussed in this video is of, you know, I, I'm looking at the person, I'm doing the research, I'm looking at the actual contract, I'm trying to decide, you know, whether this is ultimately going to really pan out for me. And realizing and seeing some like little red flags for me now are just like, no way. I don't want to deal with potential business partners that are going to be headaches or who aren't professional, who, you know, maybe don't have the same kind of work ethic that I do. Whatever it is, sometimes I have to say no, because even though the opportunity is so cool, I know that the whole thing is going to be a miserable experience because I'm going to have to deal with these extra things that kind of don't align with, you know, my personal values. Now look, negotiations can be uncomfortable. They can be tough because all of a sudden now it feels like 
we're asking for things or we're being difficult. I literally had one of my clients who's a very successful independent musician and she was just saying, you know, I don't want to come off difficult because I'm asking for these changes or I'm asking for more in the agreement. And I just said, you know, both sides get to do this. You're not saying the other side seems difficult because they're asking for more. I go, you need to, you know, put yourself in this position that you're willing to fight for the best deal. And then of course, if you get an attorney, just have them do the fight for you and they can be the shark and you're, you know, the innocent bystander. However you want to do it, it's fine. But combining these three together is going to kind of make you this master negotiator because you're going to detach the emotion from the reality of the deal and you're going to look at the potential downsides to the deal. You're going to be tactful in how you actually make the offer, whether you are asking the other side to make the offer first or whether you're making the offer and maybe just starting a little bit higher from the number that you ultimately want. And at the end of the day, you're gonna to work to get the deal done because you're gonna know what the leverage is that you have based on the value that you're bringing to the deal and what the other side ultimately wants. And look, the course that I just finished, I mentioned it earlier in this video, deep dives into literally, here's a contract, when they come back and they say, I wanna change the accounting, this is what you need to say, and this is kind of industry standard. And I walk through that for the actual course, but the tactics that I've discussed in this video are ones that you can apply to every single deal that you do moving forward. And as a pro tip that you can kind of keep in your back pocket, obviously, be humble, be polite, but be confident as you are negotiating. You can basically be kind of like your mini shark with a smile on your face and that's totally okay because that's exactly what the other side is gonna be doing to you. If you wanna check out a little of my music and what I'm up to, I just released my new album, Dangerous Daughters, which is available on all music platforms. Just search Miss Crystal. I also released a new music video, Holy Water, which I'll be sure to link at the end of this video. Be sure to come and say hi on social media. I have the same username on all platforms. I'm definitely the most active on Instagram and it's always cool to meet you guys. I'm gonna get out of here, but don't forget to subscribe, turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss another video from your new favorite redhead. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm Miss Crystal, bye.